When Meghan Markle and Prince Harry resigned from their royal duties, they got massive backlash for ruining the monarchy. And it all mainly fell on Meghan, who was accused of stealing Harry from his family and for brainwashing him. But let's not forget that the British media also had their part in the Sussex's decision. And with the information that recently surfaced, there's no wonder that the Duke and Duchess were done. How has Meghan's old co-worker exposed the British press? Was he supposed to break Harry and Meghan's marriage? Stay with me to find out how the media tried to use Simon Rex to ruin the royal family. But before we begin, don't forget to share this video with your friends and subscribe to Curiosips to stay up to date with our videos. At the beginning of the year, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry resigned from their senior royal duties and decided to move to North America. They were blamed for being disrespectful and selfish, but the truth is that they put themselves and their well-being first. And that's the good kind of selfish. You may say, how could they not be well? They had a house, they're set for life, they didn't have to work. Well, those are the material things, yes, but what they had to deal with from the outside is most likely why they took such drastic measures. Because what they were going through in the UK was just insane. Meghan really couldn't catch a break from the British press. And now it's been revealed that one of her friends was offered money to lie. You may have forgotten, but last year Meghan and Harry sued the Mail on Sunday for illegal publication of a private letter which apparently was edited to manipulate the readers and cover up the lies that the outlet spread for over a year. Prince Harry was also tired of the publication's ruthless campaign against his wife. He explained that they're taking legal action as a way to stand up to such behavior and stop the newspaper from publishing material that destroys people and destroys lives. The situation had gotten really bad over the past year. It lasted throughout Meghan's pregnancy and continued when they were raising their son. The prince said that they've been putting on a brave face, but it's been extremely painful. And I'm not really surprised because Harry had to be a silent witness to Meghan's private suffering for too long. He knows about it best because what's happening to his wife already happened with his mother and it killed her. So now Harry is scared of history repeating itself. That's why the Sussexes decided to take legal action. If you pay attention to the British press, and especially to the publisher that Meghan and Harry sued, you can actually see a pattern there. It's that they seem to love putting people of color in a bad light and applying stereotypes when making up stories about them. This includes black rappers who are topping the charts, soccer players or reality TV contestants who simply live their best lives and mind their own business. I guess Meghan also wasn't a favorite of the newspapers because, after all, she's a mixed-race American actress who joined the royal family. During the legal action, Meghan's lawyers filed a court document that detailed multiple stories that the outlet published about the Duchess over the past year. They were all false and published with the intention of making Meghan look bad. Some of them included a story from 2016 that said that Markle came from a community full of crime and street gangs and that her family still lived there. Another story that the lawyers mentioned was one that described Meghan as difficult and apparently that was the reason why one of her private secretaries quit. That's obviously not true, but the Daily Mail just loves to use stereotypes in their articles. Here's one funny story. The publication tried to turn Megan eating avocado toast into her supporting murder. Yes, someone really came up with that. They wrote that Megan's favorite snack, avocado, causes human rights abuse, drought, and murder. But just to compare, there was also an article about how Kate Middleton used avocado to deal with morning sickness when she was pregnant, and how Prince William gifted it to her with a bow and everything. In this case, there was no mention of any murder or environmental devastation. Is it just double standards or something else? Another fake story said that Meghan didn't invite her mother to the baby shower that the Duchess organized in New York and that the party cost $300,000. Meghan's mother was obviously invited and Meghan was planning to buy her plane tickets, but Doria wasn't able to attend because of work commitments. What's more, there were multiple fake stories related to the renovation of Frogmore Cottage and the fancy stuff that the Sussexes reportedly installed there. As Megan's lawyer said, there was no yoga studio, copper bath, orangery, or tennis court. It was all made up to portray the Duchess in a damaging light by suggesting that she spent taxpayer money on some crazy and fancy renovations, which obviously were false. 
The papers were so desperate to make Meghan look bad and for the people to turn on her even more that they even paid people to lie to them. Now, I wonder how much they paid Meghan's father and sister, who did the whole press tours on TV stations from around the world. But the newest shocking story includes a man who was once Markle's co-star. So the actor Simon Rex revealed that newspapers actually tried to pay him to lie about his and Meghan's relationship, which simply didn't exist even though he's often been labeled as one of Meghan's ex-boyfriends. But the truth is that nothing happened between them. The actor explained on the Hollywood Raw podcast that they never even kissed, but they hung out once in a very non-romantic way. She simply was just someone he'd met on a TV show and they got lunch, and that was it. But when Simon told that story, British tabloids contacted him and tried to pay him to lie about hooking up with Markle. So the newspapers are getting at her. But did they forget that they're also hurting the prince along the way? Rex was offered $70,000, but he said no, because he didn't feel right lying and ruining the royal family. How messed up is this whole situation? The 45-year-old Simon Rex and Meghan Markle knew each other from her working actress days. They co-starred in the TV show Cuts in 2005, and even though nothing happened between the two, E! News reports that the actor could have actually had a crush on Markle, according to the outlet. In an interview in 2018, Rex joked that he and Meghan went on a date, but they had a really awkward moment and in the end Meghan friendzoned him, which, as he said, sucked. So, as I've already mentioned, Simon Rex is sometimes labeled as Meghan's ex-boyfriend, but he isn't one of them. To be honest, the public list of her ex-partners is very short. Who has Meghan dated before Harry? The guy Markle was with from 2014 to 2016 was Corey Vidiello. He's the Canadian chef who Meghan reportedly dumped for the prince because their relationship ended shortly after Markle and Harry crossed paths. But before that, according to an insider, they were a very nice couple who was perfect for each other. But sometimes it seemed that their relationship was a bit superficial. They never really spoke about it in public, but Corey once called Meghan his lady on Twitter. Corey was always very focused on his job. They both put their careers first and the relationship came second. The successful chef didn't seem to be down because of the breakup though. He still lives in Toronto and has a few super successful restaurants and appears on lifestyle TV shows. Meghan has obviously been married before and that made some traditionalist fans of the monarchy gasp. Markle was married to the American film producer Trevor Engelson. They met in 2004 and dated for six years, only to get engaged in 2010. One year later, they got married in a fancy Jamaican ceremony, which apparently was just one big party. Well, the royal wedding was another type of a big party. The pair separated after 18 months and finalized their divorce in 2013, citing irreconcilable differences as the reason. One of the things that broke them up was Meghan's filming schedule on Suits. The show was filmed in Toronto, while her husband worked in LA. But according to the 2018 book, Meghan, a Hollywood princess, there was more than one reason for the differences in Meghan's first marriage. According to the biography, Meghan used to nag Trevor to cast her in his movies, which he wouldn't do at first. But later she appeared in a couple of his films, such as The Candidate and Remember Me in 2010. But by 2011, Meghan was starring in the hit drama Suits, so she didn't need to ask her husband for roles anymore. There's one more person that Meghan was linked to after her divorce. It's the Irish golfer Rory McIlroy, who has been rumored to date many women over the years, and Meghan was one of them. Their relationship had never been confirmed, and they could have just simply been friends, but they were spotted on a date back in the summer of 2014. And the golfer helped Meghan with the ice bucket challenge that everyone did back then. Let's get back to Meghan's lawsuit against the press. The truth is that no matter if she wins or loses, she's already shown how brave she is when she decided to go against the media's expectation. The tabloids have always expected that no royal would ever do anything to jeopardize the institution. But here we have Meghan, who made a choice that seemed impossible. She walked away from her public role instead of quietly dealing with the constant negative press and false stories. The court case may be even more difficult for Meghan because if she and Harry appear in court, they will have to face her father, Thomas Markle, unless he's forced to testify through a conference call, but still. 
and the man himself said that he's prepared to give his account against his daughter. He's actually looking forward to that because, as he said, it will be quite stunning for everybody. Allegedly, Thomas was very hurt by the things that were said about him, and he worked closely with the Mail on Sunday's defense team. This man claims that he loves Meghan so much, but will do anything to go against her for a bit of publicity. That's kind of a weird love, don't you think? I'm glad that Meghan and Harry decided to do what's best for the well-being of their family. But I guess that whether they're working royals or not, the press will still be making up stories about them. Because this is just how it is. Do you guys think the same? What do you think of the tabloids that tried to pay Simon Rex to lie about Meghan? How do you think the court case will turn out? Let's talk about it in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to not miss our newest videos. Remember to share the video with your friends and leave a thumbs up. See you.